Good morning, good evening, and not good night. It is going to be L3 IRD shutting down the words that I would be saying to you if it was actually 11 p.m., which I've been usually streaming right now, but it is actually 2 p.m. on the East Coast, about 7 8 p.m. on the GMT time, and it is going to be the 30th episode of Alerting League. Testing 1, 2, 3. It is the 12th month of the year. Yes, December 3rd, 2012, right now, around the East Coast webs, and we are going to be talking about a little item called the Andre's Torment. Again, we are still doing the previews for pretty much all the Season 3s and new changes, slash pretty much the re-update of League of Legends, so there you go with that. We are on our third episode. Again, you can go check out the VODs over on YouTube, YouTube youtube.com slash definitive underscore esports, but first things first i want to thank all the sponsors over on the below webs antec triton benq magcats and xmg while also as well thanking definitive esports check them out d-esports.com for covering a lot of ipl um sc2 wise league of legends wise and even a little bit of shoot mania ipl5 was such a great event and we actually talk about that a little bit today a little briefly, not too much, because it's just a little insight of what I've been seeing through all the tournaments that have been happening, Worlds, Finals, LG, Dallas, and then now with IBL 5. But the first part of the episode of Testing 1, 2, 3, it's all about the awesome, awesome item of a Leandre's Torment. Again, guys, if you don't actually know what Leandre's Torment is, it's a really interesting item that is building off of more magic penetration, but it is also building off of a thing that was in Alpha, actually. Mana burn, or AP burn. Magic burn, sorry, there we go with that. Um, yeah, it's building off of mana magic burn, and it's a really, I guess, interesting thing to say. Yeah, Blackfire Torch, that is another thing that we just added on that does the same kind of things. But the Andre's Tournament is actually the only thing that's viable, or can be built only in some of this rip, so we're going to be talking about that right quickly. Haunting Guys, Amplifying Tone, 980 for the recipe. It's a really good uh, item that gives you a little bit of health, a little bit of AP, but also gives you that magic big penetration, which a lot of people kind of sell short during during lane phase slash in the beginning of the game. Like, I think I remember casting one time with Malthus X. The, there's this matchup that had Ajax versus a Vladimir, and Vladimir had about, I think, 45 to 50 magic penetration along with sorcerer's shoes and on top of that a uh i think it was either haunting guys or something else and haunting guys and it literally put the jacks at true damage on magic resist Mag magic resist on jacks was about like 46 or 47 and you know he was doing 50 magic penetration just true and once you have that magic penetration onto a, a champion you can just keep him easily easily denied such easily penetrated as you would like to see um onto the champion and the champion can't really do anything so literally if you have that extra magic penetration during that lane phase or even during a game it does so much of a wonder um later on in games and such like that so just a little short thing magic penetration good if you can get there with some health and ap power as well well, that's just great and prime. And that's why Haunting Guys, and now the upgrade to that Leandre Stormant is a really, really smart buy to buy into. So we're going to go check out a little game on the PBE server. Yet again, Leandre Stormant, kind of good. Kind of good. Good stats, I would say. But, um, you know, maybe we can see it on a different kind of setting. So really quickly, we're going to be checking out this a little bit of zeros and don'ts. Interesting name, interesting name. Building up to a Leandre's Torment. Just really quick note, he does have social issues. He has also had the Spirit Stone, which is also a AP kind of jungler dependent. So he is a jungler, so really quickly, viability of this item, Leandre's Torment, kind of relies on more of pressure in your early lane phase. And truthfully, if you're a jungler, I wouldn't really pick this on up. And unfortunately, I can't show it to you where I, I would say that the lane phase for the top laner and in the middle would be probably the best way to actually um, work out Leandre's Torment into your build. Um, some viable champions with it, of course, would be um, anything that's mana-less dependent, 
at the AP champion, so Rumble would definitely benefit because you already built it, built it on him already. Vladimir would definitely benefit because you already would build it on um, Vladimir as well, just as a secondary kind of guide. But um, also on to... Sorry. Also on to Katarina. And Katarina, probably the best of the beneficials of this. Even the DFG is a pretty good item right now, Izzyan. But uh, yeah. Best of the beneficials because you still get that health, you still get that magic penetration, and you get a lot of bursts with it. So the quick thing about Leandre's Torment, I didn't really talk about the stats, this is the magic penetration, right? But the passive, which is the spell damage that burns people for about 5% of the current health. What that means is, it's a, it's a secondary pretty much ignite debuff. It's like with Brand, remember him? That guy that was played in Season 1 that's never played again in any of the seasons? Um, He's a his passive pretty much is what that is five percent debuff pretty much the whole time that you are in that ignite kind of spell or in that, in that burn spell. It's like an ignite, but it doesn't really burn through your health truthfully because it does not reduce health regen effects, but it still does extra damage. And when you have extra damage, like so, like you just saw with zero is picking up right there onto Nidalee, it's just a really really strong strong idea. So, really quickly, where would this be very, very viable from on the top lane? Other than the mana list of the champions. I mean, I think everyone would love to see it on Singe because you have the AoE effects onto your AP with uh, Poison Trail. On the top of that, actually, the Trail plus the um, Toss, the, the Flip, would be pretty strong with Singe. But I don't know. Truthfully, I would say that would be a definitely good item for safe if you're winning your lane really early with Singe, but overall I don't feel like that's probably the best idea to actually uh, like start off with. Literally for the Sun item to be very viable, more often times than not it's likely Black Cleaver equivalent. You want to build this item as a really super early lane dominant. You don't want to rely on it as on your core items unless you're like Katarina or like Vladimir or something like that where it doesn't really hurt you if you actually have it as one of your core items. So again, if you rush to it and you're not very viable with it technically, like how um, Miss Elise is, it's probably not the best idea, truthfully. But she's building up all healthy and all tanky, so truthfully that's not too bad as well. Another champion that I would say mana dependent that would be kind of viable would be Malphite just because you do have a lot of uh, just trickling damage with Seismic Shard and on top of that Ground Slam. But again, it's a little iffy. A little iffy per se as well. Non-Orthodox champions it would go on. Non-Orthodox champions, non champions it would go on. Probably I would say AP Varus would be pretty good. Um, there's a lot of talk about AP Varus being a actual champion again, although that Varus kind of died really easily. But uh, AP Varus would be a very, very interesting champion to put it on. I feel like he's gonna be a secret OP, I guess, in season three, unless like Avrumi or somebody plays him more. Niantanzo would probably play play him a lot more. Um, Quantix Niantanzo right there. So, I mean, yeah, that would be really interesting to see. But overall, um, you're not gonna really see it off of like regular. Uh, AP champions. Like I saw, I think one of one of my replays, uh, of Morgana pick it up. Morgana with AP burn. I mean, yeah, it would work with Soul Shackles, I guess, but it's not really truthfully one of the best ideas to go into. I would rather still build into either Chalice of Harmony or Zelda's Hourglass, and that's pretty much how you determine viability for a champion. Like, would you usually buy it for the skill set that you usually have? Rise? Definitely not. You would want to build into uh, maybe. Mana Moonade slash the equivalent to that Archangel Staff. Like, you've seen some people take Mana Moonade on, on Rise just because it's a pretty good item technically to uh, help push lanes because Rise is not a great pusher. Um, Nami, maybe not so much. Nidalee, not so much as well. I mean, all she has Prowl and such like that, like single target. Anything with AoE effect like Cannon and such like that would be a really viable uh, option to get the Mana Burn on. But we'll see what other things will come out from this. But other than that, which lane should they take it on? I said that middle and top. Um, support could take it a little bit if you do have a kind of a lane where a support has ignite and the AD carry has like a heal or a cleanse. It'd be a really 
interesting buy per se, but it would do a lot of bit of damage um, in that lane phase, but you wouldn't be really uh, warding up or anything like that as well. It'd be pretty hard to actually uh, keep yourself safe into that game. Um, jungle again. I mean, it looks like Zero's Endurance is doing a pretty good job overall, just trying to um, poke down and everything. Maybe if uh, you had like a jungle rumble, <laughs> rumble in the jungle, maybe it would work out, but I, I truthfully don't think that is the smartest idea to actually have a uh, have a AP uh, jungler to pick up that awesomeness of a Meandry's Torment. Although, a Moomoo jungle with that would be pretty good. It's just really interesting to see that, you know, if you wanted to get a Leandre's Torment, you won't be very supporty, so it's a lot different from what you would usually think would be a good idea. Again, Leandre's Torment is um, something that's built off of haunting guys, so you have to use that kind of thought process. You want to get health, you want to get mana penetration, and you want to get damage. That's pretty much what you're all a your whole aim for, for this um, item, so... Again, it, it's all dependent on what you want to go with, but it's also all dependent if you can um, do the damage and clean up quickly. But once you do the damage and you clean up quickly, you can just pretty much clear it out really, really good because you have so much um, extra utility with AP burn. And we do see with Zero and Drones now with the Andrew Storm, he has a big help, Giant Spot. Spell down to Riley's Crystal Scepter. And that is definitely one of the items that you want to pair this up with. You want to keep on getting that burn, plus you want to keep on getting that damage down, right? You do see burn, the burn ignite thing on still. Technically, you're probably going to see a lot of that tooltip. Like how, you know how brands um, dance? Sometimes you can just uh, pile it on onto the path of everything. It's kind of those things like that. That's why you do see Jesus Christ right now. Taking no damage, but you know, taking all that burn, unfortunately. But really quickly. Again, with Elise, like you want to pair that up with a Rylus Crystal Scepter just because you want to keep on getting the most maximum DPS that you can with Leandre's Torment. Like, I would see that work out with an Ari per se, if Ari would rush the Leandre's Torment, but again, not a very, very, very useful item onto Ari. Like, it's a really okay item for tanks slash people that, who don't depend on AP. Like, I would say Diana. Oh, that'd be a really, really sick item to build onto it because it just depends on burst and depends on a little bit of uh, AP. But onto people like a Nidalee, like to people like Annie, it's not very viable as a, a champion. So, to yours who wishes to their wealth, um, I would say test it out. I mean, that's the biggest thing. You want to test out this uh, item just because you want to get the most use out of it. And again, Season 3, you're going to test out most items because, yeah, we have no idea how the interaction is going to be. Again, PvE is a, a good environment to play in, but it's not the best environment. I mean, technically right now, you see the score 43-18 and uh, Toke up. And yeah, so, I mean, it's not the best test of skill to really uh, maximize your real... I guess damage output onto what you want to do with items, but you get a general gist of what you want from all the items as well. Again, we talked about last time, Chaos Crucible, very very useful item. Really quick, Static Shiv onto the Gangbreak while we are kind of looking at all the new items. Really interesting item per se. It's kind of the replacement of what uh, Phantom Dancer used to be. But Phantom Dancer overall, I'm thinking right now, is a lot more useful than all the uh, new items that do give you attack speed and such like that. Um, more people on the AD carries are going to try to build into Rune and Turrican, but Rune and Turrican isn't like the greatest per se of end all be all kind of champions or of uh, abilities or items. Just because, yeah, you get extra shots with Rune and Turrican, which um, Mr. Varus is building up right now, but you only get that attack speed bonus, which isn't actually the greatest. And with, um, with um, the damage output that you get with Phantom Dancer, damage output being the critical strike that you get from it. There's just so much more that you can do with that, more than what you could do with Ruin and Turricane. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Static Shift, really quickly, stats, 40 attack speed, 20% chance, 
and you get a little extra magic bonus, which is kind of the replacement of Iron Spark, which is it get taken away from Summoner Shift. A decent item, but again, for the stats that you have to buy for, it's about 2400. It's a little bit under what Phantom is, is 2600, but it's still really, really expensive. I would never truly buy it unless you are pretty ahead. That's another one of those 80 top items or 80 bruiser items that really push you ahead. Or technically 80 carry, but you're kind of a little bit behind, or you want to have a little bit of a uh, advantage of dueling. But overall, I feel like Leandro's Torment, going back to the actual part of the episode, it's a decently good item. It's probably one of the better items that has been built in League of Legends for a while because the extra utility that you get with the AP burn is actually pretty strong. And um, although we're not seeing the, the true use of it, because we're not seeing it on like a champion that does do AoE awesomeness, it's still really good damage that comes out and it's really good burst with on top of that for zero, so I appreciate at least trying to think out of the box over here. Unfortunately for not, did not have a better uh, replay of Leandro's Torn because yeah, the other replay I had was off of Ari and Ari went like four or eight something, so it wasn't probably the best idea as well. So yeah, that is part one of the episode of a Learning League episode thirty, testing one, two, three. Give me your thoughts. Give me your words about what you think. Season three item you should we should look at next. I'm gonna be t talking about probably the uh, Andre tournament with Singe and such like that on more viable champion probably next episode. But give me your thoughts and give me your words over on Twitter.com/l3rd or on Twitter.com.com/d underscore esports and let us know what you think should be the item that we should look at um, next time. But otherwise, we're gonna be starting out a game. Our uh, part number two, pretty soon, gonna be talking about IBL5 and all its majesty. Be right back, guys. Don't you fret. Don't you worry. Part two starting.